This is Waylon, and let's have a look at the dividend stop loss rules in the Income Tax Act Canada. Before we actually look at what those rules do, we need to first understand the problem that those rules are meant to address, at least the problem in the eyes of CRA or the federal government. So let's say we have a Canadian corporation that we'll call CanCorp1. CanCorp1 decides to buy some of the shares of another Canadian corporation called CanCorp2. And they buy those shares either just before or on the dividend record date for CanCorp 2. So what that does is that it entitles CanCorp 1 to receive a payment of dividends from CanCorp 2. So those CanCorp 2 shares are bought for $20 per share. And then very soon, CanCorp 2 pays a $3 dividend to CanCorp 1. And that's $3 per share. That payment of the $3 dividend causes the value of CanCorp 2 shares to drop by $3 down to $17 per share. CanCorp 1 then sells those CanCorp 2 shares for the market value of $17 per share. So the tax effects for CanCorp 1 are twofold. First, the dividend of $3 received by CanCorp 1 from CanCorp 2 is tax-free for CanCorp 1 because any intercorporate dividend paid between two Canadian corporations is done on a tax-free basis. The second tax effect for CanCorp 1 is that the sale of CanCorp 2 shares will trigger a capital loss of $3 per share. So what CanCorp 1 has done is that it has created a $3 capital loss without economically losing $3. CanCorp 1 still has $20. It has the $17 that it got from selling CanCorp 2 shares and the $3 dividend. But now, on top of that, it has a capital loss of $3 per share, which it can use to offset any other capital gains that it might have. The federal government's response to that problem was to create the dividend stop loss rules. So what those rules do is to reduce that capital loss by the amount of the dividends. And, and that rule applies if one of two conditions is present. The first is that the shares are held for less than one year, or the corporate taxpayer, in our, in our example, that would be CanCorp1, owns more than 5% of the dividend-paying shares of the other corporation. 